Good morning all. Myself Romla. I am really thankful to each and everyone for giving me opportunity to present here. Today webinar we are going to discuss the topic on hearing aids. So in this we are looking for history of hearing aids, types of hearing aids, components of hearing aids. First we move on to the history of hearing aids. So we will start with the history of hearing aids. Hearing aids and other hearing devices have come along away from their humble beginnings to large trumpet like device to small, practically invisible for digital processing instruments. In 1600s to 1799, dating as far back as the 17th century, sailors would use a device called a trumpet to communicate with each other over long distance. The devices were eventually used by individuals afflicted with hearing loss. In 1800 to 1899, new hearing devices known as auricles and corners were introduced in the early 1800s, but were similar to function to ear trumpet. In 1900 to 1920, electrical hearing aids entered the market at the turn of the 20th century. In 1921-1953, in 1921, the first vacuum for hearing aids was Patent, but it was not until 1934 that it was effectively used. This device consisted of microphone and ear receiver amplifier, two batteries which generally uh, lasted only one day. In 1955-1969, hearing ears which are worn on the body to the, this point finally moved to the ear with the introduction of uh, in the ear ITC style model. In 1970 to 1995, the early 1970s saw the introduction of noise reduction technology with the use of integrated circuits. In 1966 2000 to 2006, the first digital hearing aids are developed with noise management, feedback management, directional microphones and multibands. The timeline of hearing aids can be classified into acoustic era, carbon era, vacuum tube era, transistor era, microelectronic or digital era. First we see the uh, acoustic era. The first acoustic era he he hearing aid was simply the hand cubed behind the ear. The amplifier sound in the frequency region of uh, 1 to 3rd uh, kilohertz around 5 to 10 dB gain. In 1984, Berger was done a study about animal horn. Animal horn were also in use in 20th century. Uh, the amplification was obtained between 250 to 2000 Hz. Next we see the trumpet. Ear trumpet are hidden inside the top hat, armatures, fans and beards. The principle to have a large open end to the cult uh, as much sound possible. This is a ear trumpet picture. This is the um, the largest uh, portion of the, this ear trumpet. And from this only the, we, we will cut the sound as much we we need. The energy is transferred to the uh, ear ear by a gradual reduction in the area along uh, the length of the instrument. So next we see the auricles. The small metal sound collector shaped like a trumpet. Shell or flower attached to the thin metal hand bands. This is the auricle. This is the metal band that attached to the metal band, head band. Uh, this is the covering with the coating with the metals. Um, this is a, a small metal sound collector. And next one, the beard receptible hearing aids. This is the beard receptible hearing aids. This curve the body of the hearing aid, cut the sound and uh, funnel it up into a pair of ear pieces. The next one carbon array. The carbon hearing aid is the simplest hearing aid consisting of a carbon microphone, battery of 3 to uh, 6 volts and a magnetic receiver all connected in, the, uh, in a series. The first carbon hearing aid was large table model called Aquilalian. The first wearable model called Acupon. Carbon hearing aids were suitable for individuals with mild to moderate hearing losses. The couplers, carbon microphones and carbon amplifiers are came into the existence in the, this area. This is the vacuum tube era. And next we go to the transistor and the integrated circuit era. 
The transistor became commercially available in 1952. This reduced battery size and power consumption, which made hearing aids to be worn near the ear. The eye glass hearing aid evolved in this area. The batteries, which had an external receiver like a body aid, come in a variety of shapes and were worn or placed under the hair. All the commons could move behind the ears as well uh, as self-contained cover, uh, curved package which is known as a behind the ear head. Till 1990s, BT were in use. But, the, uh, but with further improvements in battery chemistry, amplifier efficiency and transducer size, the entire hearing aid could be located inside the ear canal. This is the eye glass hearing aid. Then next we move to the digital era. In 1987, digital circuits and digital memories took over potentiometers and integrated circuits. These circuits enabled the amplification characteristics of hearing aids to be adjusted by the clinician with greater flexibility and precision. Here the sound waveform is converted into a series of number of numbers and manipulated using digital circuits. In 90, 9, 1996, Fully digital BT, IT, ITC became uh, commerci uh, commercially available. The digital hearing aids had increased flexibility with which frequency response, shaping, and compression characteristics can be controlled. Next, we move to the types of hearing aid. These are the uh, different types of hearing aid body aid, behind the ear, receiver in the ear canal, in the ear, in the canal, completely in the canal, spectangle hearing aids. So first we move to the body level hearing aid. This is the largest type of hearing aid of the, it is body level hearing aid. As implied their name, they worn as somewhere on the body in a pocket, in a pouch, around neck, uh, around the neck or on the belt. This is the body level hearing aids model. They are connected by a cable connecting two or three wires to a receiver from the amplified sound uh, images. The receiver usually plugs into a ear mode custom made uh, for the individual's ear canal and conca. So behind the ear, next we move the behind the BTE. The next uh, smallest type of hearing aid is the BTE. Uh, these are also two pieces hearing aids. The microphone electronics and receiver are mounted in the uh, characteristics banana shaped case. And the sound is conveyed acoustically by a tube or a tube to custom hearing aid mode. Next one in the uh, ear ITE. The smallest variation of the IT hearing aid of a half conca or half shell ITE. It uh, which is feel only lower half of the conca up to the curse helios. Another smallest variation in the lower profile ITE which does not extend to on onwards the from ear canal sufficiently to fill the conca. This is you can see this is our ear pinna. So hearing aid is fit in the till uh, up to the uh, curse helios. Next to the advantages and disadvantages. Um, acoustically IT instruments are superior or other types. The microphone is situated within the ear thereby taking advantages of the pinna function. The receiver is lock, uh, located the near the tympanic membrane as possible, resulting in the enhancement of high frequency information due to small cavity enclosed by the instruments. Um, the first uh, uh, advantage is uncomfortable to wear, less durable than the other types. They can frequently malfunction because of the in, uh, interruption of uh, debris. Next one in the canal, uh, when the IT hearing a sufficiently small portion of the cavern coca and the outer face is parallel to the ear canal opening. This refers to as an, uh, in the canal hearing aid. Next one, receiver in the canal. Receiver is located in the canal rather than the BTE case. An electrical cable rather than the acoustic tube runs from the electronic to the ear canal. This is a receiver in the canal. This is a rece this is a rece uh, receiver. Next one completely in the canal. Uh, hearing aids uh, that to fit within the ear, can ear canal are known as completely in the canal uh, or uh, we call it as a CIC. 
these hearing aids use compounds small enough to enough uh, that one none of the hearing aid protrude to the conca removing these hearing aids from the ear can be difficult so often small handles similar to nylon fishing line uh, with the uh, small knob on the ends is attached to the hearing aids and this does, uh, does extend to, to the into the conca when the medical end of the CSE hearing aid within the few millimeters of the eardrum, the CSE referred to as a peritympanic CSE. Next one, in, invisible in the canal, hearing aids or invisible in the canal, IIC model. IIC hearing aids are smallest invisible hearing aids which are most suitable for people with mild to moderate hearing loss. They are designed and uh, sculptured to fit entirely inside your ear canal. The extraction code are usually fitted with the IEIC hearing aids to help insert the remove from their uh, ear. This is a custom fit uh, for uh, ear. In each uh, patient we using the customized only. For depends on the ear canal they will be big or uh, small. A deep fitting IEIC hearing aids can be really reducing the sensation of the occlusion. This is the IIC model. So the two one is one is the latest one, one is the old IIC model. This one uh, helping the uh, small thing to uh, from uh, here to we can remove it. This one. The last one eyeglass aid. The last type of the earring aid is a spectacular eyeglass aid. The uh, there are actually two types of spectangle aid. In first type is side frame of the spectangles and contains all the hearing aid compounds. This, uh, this were the first type of produced and were uh, bulky in the appearance. In current models of the part of the bow that uh, fits behind the ear on, uh, on the conventional pair of spectangles is worn off and short adapter is uh, glued on the uh, it is placed. Next we go for the next topic, compounds of the hearing aids. These are the compounds of hearing aids. Transducer, and the transducer is a coming microphone, receiver, telecoil. The next is coming to amplifier, battery, switch on, tone culture, tone controller. First we meet the microphone. For a perfect mic microphone, the waveform electrical signal is equal to wave from the acoustic signal. The relationship between the size of the output, voltage and size of the input, Sound processor is known as the sensitivity of the microphone. Typically, microphones have a sensitivity of about 16 m5 Pascal, which means that sound of 70 dB SPL produces a voltage of the around 1 mV. The microphone location: the aid uh, hearing aid microphones are usually located within the hearing aid, but can be located in the necessary accessories such as a handheld microphone, wireless transmitter or satellite microphone located on the opposite side of the head. This is the principle of the um, um, microphone. This is operation. An amplifier is built in the same container as the rest of uh, the microphone. It's a job in to turn the minute electrical currents following and from the diaphragm into larger uh, currents that can be passed on the main hearing aid amplifier. The microphone amplifier is sometimes refers to as a FET, but it was made using type of transistor known as the field effective transistor. Next we see the microphone's imperfections. Microphones eventually break down if they are exposed to advice chemical agents like a, uh, perspirations. Microphones generate a small amount of the random electrical noise which is uh, partly, uh, partly the result of random motions of hair molecules against the diaphragm and part, uh, partly the result of random electrical activity within the internal mic uh, microphone amplifier. 
Microphones are also sensitive to vibration. This vibration will be amplified into an annoying sound if the mechanical transmission of the vibrations from the receiver to a microphone is strong enough and uh, or if a gain of the hearing aids high enough, uh, then this uh, feedback loop uh, may cause an audible occultation usually at a uh, low frequency. This can be avoided the most hearing aid except uh, in the ear ITE, in the kernel ITC and completely in the kernel CIC. Hearing aids are became uh, their small size and custom manner of the constructions. There are so many uh, types of microphones will be there. The first one carbon microphone. The carbon microphones contains carbon dust granules or spherical granules when the sound hit uh, the microphones diaphragm movement of the diaphragm puzzles the bits of carbon closer together or pulse them apart from this change in the electrical resistance of the microphones. This fluctuation resisting causes the electrical current of to fluctuate a similar way and when it, this is passed uh, through a coil inside the receiver, it is create a fluctuating magnetic field inside the receiver. This fluctuating magnetic field pushed and pulled against the uh, a permanent magnet thus making the receiver diaphragm move in a and out move in and out and in a synchronous manner with the sound hitting the microphone the sound level out of the receiver will be 2 to 3, uh, 30 dB greater than the input of the microphones. That's the next one electromagnetic microphone. It is a simple device that uses an induction coil to capture and convert electromagnetic fields EMF into audible sound. The next one is dyna, uh, dynamic microphone. Dynamic microphones are uh, versatile and ideal or general purpose use. They use a simple design with few moving parts. They are relatively uh, set, uh, set and uh, resilient to rough handling. They are also better suited for hand, uh, handling high volume levels such as such from the certain musical instruments amplifiers. They have no internal amplifier and do not require batteries or external power. The uh, physioelectric and crystal microphone. A contact microphone also known as a physioelectric uh, microphone is a from a uh, microphone that sends of audio vibration through a contact with a uh, sold object, you, unique normal air microphones. Contact microphones are almost completely intensive uh, vibration but transfers only in a structure borne sound. The crystal microphone uh, uses uh, uh, electro electric effect of the Rohel star salt. Quartz of uh, other crystalline material, this means that when the mechanical stress plays upon the medical, a voltage electromagnetic force. EMF generalized. Directional microphone. Directional microphone surface and noise coming from the some directions while retaining good sensitivity to sound arriving from one direction. Microphone that are more sensitive to sound from other directions rather than the are located at directional microphones. The original sound spot of leading to the uh, front volume is a called uh, front port and the port leading to come uh, to come volume is a called a uh, port or part of report the diaphragm of the uh, microphone is a uh, uh, driven by differences in a pressure of uh, between the front and back volumes is also called a pressure differences microphone or a pressure gradient microphone the directional properties of the microphone depends on two ways First, in external time delay and internal time delays. First, we are checking for the external, what is the external time delay. The time taken for the sound outside the hearing is to get from the inlet port of the other. The second one, internal delay, internal time delay. The uh, arises because of the rear port uh, contains an acoustic damper uh, or resistor. The combines which they are cavity at the back of the diaphragm uh, or to create a low pass filter that passes most of the amplified frequencies without attention uh, but the uh, but with some delays that inherent uh, all first uh, all filters next one the second uh, the sound 
is coming from the rear directions and the front part of the latter than the rear port however the sound entering the ear delay, delayed when it is get to the internal low pass filter and if it is external and internal delays are the equal then the sounds are other um, rear will reach both sides of the diaphragm at the same time there will be no uh, net force of the di diaphragm such a microphone is in, uh, in, in, uh, incentive to sounds from the uh, rear if the in internal delay less than the external delay is the microphone will be intensive to uh, sounds coming from other directions The directional microphones are particularly important to hearing aids because they are only a form of signal processing that can be improve the signal to noise ratio (SNR) in a way that leads to improve the intelligibility. The next one, the omnidirectional microphones, is almost equally sensitive in all the directions. The second one, the uh, bidirectional microphone, picks up the sound from the other side, from uh, from back or front. Uh, they eventually well uh, equally well uh, but uh, it is very much less sensitive to sound arriving from the other directions this type may be useful uh, in those situations where two speakers are uh, facing each other with the microphones between them dual microphone hearing it next to separate uh, omnidirectional microphones each with uh, one inlet inlet port are used to instead of the single microphones with the two ports. The output from the second microphone is electronically delayed and uh, subtracted from the first microphone output improve the performance. When a ambient noise is not a problem, the user can switch off one of the microphones. Next uh, topics we discuss go, going to discuss amplification amplifiers. The basic function of the amplifier is simply to make a small electrical signal to the larger electrical signal. The amplifier can do three things. First one, they can make the voltage larger but not affect the current. The second one, they can make the current larger but not affect the voltage. Third thing, they can make both voltage and current larger. The job of amplifier is to make a power from battery and transfer into the amplifier output in a manner controlled by the input signal. Next one, amplifier technology. How does it work? The uh, key element and amplifier that allows the current to be controlled by the similar current is a transistor. <clears throat> amplifiers usually are made up of the several transistors and resistors connected together to provide a better per performance than the achievable with the single transistor. These multiple transistors and resistors are made using photographic and chemical technique into integrated circuit. Complete amplifiers also need other electro electrical components diodes and uh, capacitors for performance the most uh, noticeable devi uh, deviation from the ideal course of when a singles uh, get to larger from an amplifier to handle properly peak clipping and uh, distortion amplifiers cannot produce singles larger in a voltage than some specified maximum if the biggest signal in the amplifier is near the uh, near this maximum and either input signals level or gain of the amplifiers is increased the amplifier will uh, will clip the peaks of the signal output amplifiers hearing aids and many uh, may contain many amplifiers the final amplifier called the output amplifier there are four varieties of amplifiers used in the hearing aids referred as to a class a class b class d class h Okay, then the first one, the class A amplifiers, commonly used as analog hearing aid. It's a called single-ended output store uh, stage because it is only used a single output transistor to drive the receiver. To prevent the distortion to output, this transistor supplied with uh, half of the battery voltage. 
which therefore limits of the possible voltage swing across the receiver and hence the current that divide, uh, drives and receiver. Class A amplifiers are typically found in the hearing aids with lower gain and power that are used to fit a mild to moderate hearing loss. Class, uh, class A amplifiers provide a simple and effective am amplification in these situations. Class B amplifiers, a class B amplifiers used to output transistors as opposed to the single transistor used in a class A amplifier. One transistor is amplifies the one half and the other transistor amplifies another half. The receiver has a third electrical connection in the center of the coil. The electrical driver coil inside the receiver are connected to the such uh, that uh, they will add a two halves of the signal coming from the output transistors. Because the two half uh, halves of uh, the input signals are opposite in the polarity of they are presented to the output. The transistors output phase, this type of output st uh, stage also called push and pull output stage. Because of the, this configuration of peak to peak voltage uh, across the receivers rise to nearly four times the battery voltage. In this way, drive current to a receiver and hence to acoustic output in a generally increased. Uh, class B amplifiers have a maximum eff efficiency of a 78 percentage. Class B amplifier produce a more power output for the same amount of power input as an equivalent class A amplifier. Class D amplifiers, instead of the dire, uh, directly amplifying the uh, audio signal, say class D amplifier uses the audio signal modulate. Uh, mod, uh, modulate. In the uh, width of each uh, pulse within the high frequency, a train of pulse hence is called uh, uh, width modulate type of out, output amplifier. Class D output uh, stages may be used to both analog and digital hearing aids. Class D amplifiers has a theoretical maximum efficiency uh, of 100 percentage. High efficiency of higher uh, undestroyed output signal present to the receiver. A class A, class A D output stage will be have a 3 dB greater ability to amplify a signal equivalent to class A output stage. Class H amplifiers. Class H amplifiers have one which Connected to the two output power supplies. A low voltage is used to low input signals levels. Then a higher supply voltage automatically connected when the input level exceeds uh, limits of low voltage supply. The results high efficiency of output stage for amplification of speed uh, situations that consist of mostly of uh, low input level with the only occasional demands and amplification higher signal levels. When a strong signal begins amplified, uh, the bias current is increased. Uh, the, and uh, when a weak signal is uh, being amplified, bias current is decreased. This is enables to amplify the operate the maximum efficiency to possible for a class A device. But this is still less than efficiency possible with the class D device. Next one, compression amplifiers. In hearing is the compression peak clipping every, uh, we all know. This amplifier helps change the amount of amplification in the input level changes. A compression is nothing more than amplifier that turns on the on gains uh, as the input to the amplifier increases. SNH, uh, sensory neural hearing uh, environment have a dynamic ranges so smaller than the normal. So that less than amplification is required for interns sound that the Sounds than for work peak point, weak input sounds. Its job a compressor amplifies to provide the re required amount of amplification and a decrease in, in the input level increases. A compression amplifier is also called an automatic gain control AGC or automatic volume control AG, AVE, AV, AVC. Next topic is a receiver. Receiver is an electronic trans electroacoustic transducer converts electrical signal to the acoustic signals. This hearing instrument's receiver must be highly efficient and capable of uh, producing very high output SLPs. The hearing instrument's receiver work in a accordance with the electromagnetic principle. A current flowing through a coil causes it to behave like a management that is 
its form a mag uh, magnetic north or south pole depending on the di direction of current an alternating current flowing through the coil causes a shift in a polarity of the coil corresponding to the alternating current thus a continual change in the directions in the magnetic field and lines and a alternating magnetic field is a result this is the principle of operation of the moving coil from the receiver next one telecoils telecoils is a small coil wire that produce a voltage when an alternating magnetic field flow through it the electrical converts at the magnetic energy from the telephone hand uh, handset into the electrical signal Early telephonic receivers radiated a small magnetic field united by the um, product from the loudspeaker. This magnetic field uh, uh, oscillates with the auto with the audio signal in the tele, uh, telephone receiver. If the oscillating magnetic field can be uh, sensed by the small coil of wire placed near to the loudspeaker in the telephonic handset. A small electrical voltage signal. Proportional to the telephone acoustic signal, then appearance between the two ends of the coil wire. This signal can be amplified into provide a use, uh, usable signal for the patient with the hearing loss. But next, we go into the batteries. Batteries are devices that store electrically energy in a chemical form. The battery provides the increased signal power. That the hearing aids delivers to the aid uh, the uh, to aid wearer. Hearing aids and batteries are sometimes called cells or uh, button cells. Uh, the important characteristics of the battery: first one, voltage, capacity you need to check, electrical impedance, and physical size. The batteries are most commonly used for hearing aids. Use sink the uh, use sink and oxygen as the their batteries. Um, one is a negative and one is a positive electrode respectively. So batteries are known as sink and air batteries. Whatever their physically size, they are generally approximately 1.4 volts. When not counted, the approximately 1.2 uh, volts, 2.5 volts. When they are using, when the sink is um, is close to depend, uh, deplet, depleted. The battery voltage drops suddenly, and hearing aids get weaker, more distorted, and eventually ceases to operate once the voltage became too low. Few hearing aids are well operatable once the battery voltage drop below 1.0 V voltage. Uh, some hearing aids became unstable when the battery is near uh, end of the life. The hearing aids generate emits low frequency tone or noise. This can sound like a motorboat, and uh, phenomenon is called a motorboating. Other combination of materials that are sometimes used in hearing aids are uh, mercury oxide and zinc, which generate 1.35 voltage. Silver oxide zinc, which is generate 1.5 voltage. Body level hearing aids are user use larger batteries such as a a a a a a size. This have a magnetized uh, dioxide or sink their electrode ma uh, material and also generate 1.5 voltage. Other batteries sometimes are used in the body aids use ethylene instead of sink their negative electrode and uh, one several material as a positive electrode. Uh, these are more expensive have a higher capacity and generate 3 voltage. These are the different types of battery sizes. Um, 18 size 675 uh, 312 10 size we uh, in each in each hearing a type each battery we are using for bt we using 675 and 575 mostly we using 675 only then again bt and it we using 13 and 260 then uh, again it we using uh, uh, it can be 3 12 and uh, 140 and um, ITC CIC uh, 10A or uh, 5 and CIC we using 35 size and uh, 5A.
then uh, nowadays it is a uh, rechargeable battery is also available rechargeable cells are can be discharged or recharged several hundred times so the battery also only have a replacing every turn every one day three years the disadvantage of rechargeable cells are their capacity around only 10 percentage of the non rechargeable cells are the same size so that rechargeable cells are that recharging must be performed regularly often every every night so the switches to turn the hearing ears on and off uh, to change the operation of hearing ears from the one function to another to change the acoustic characteristics of hearing ears other sides of the that of the so to uh, tone control tone control can be uh, located on the outside of inside of the cases as a switch on a screw adjustment <clears throat> a tone control is generally through the uh, of a secure design to provide a high or low uh, frequently emphasizes the tone control is a filtered network located between stage amplifier if the frequency is emphasis is desired high pass filter network is used commonly low frequency emphasis is low pass filter network is used they are marked as an h uh, high frequency emphasis l and normal response these are the my hearing aids topic thank you